So much of nymph fishing is about presentation, whereabouts in the water column your flies are in relation to the fish you're trying to catch. And the fly that I'm going to tie for you today is one of my most important aids to making sure the presentation is in the right place. It's uh, basically a nymph which is fairly plain, a little olive thing, uh, which is tied with a tungsten jig back. So hence the reason it's called the olive jig back. Now, it's slightly labor intensive, uses two different types of thread, um, a very tiny hook, that's a size 18, Hanak Jig Champion, um, H480BL, a fantastically strong hook in a really tiny size. So even though you're fishing with a really small hook, you've got uh, every chance in the world of landing really big fish. I'm using two different sorts of tying thread, both olives. So there's my normal Semperfly uh, Nano Silk, the ultra fine stuff, which I'll use at the start. And then I'm gonna switch to a Techstream um, Ato standard thread um, just after that. You'll, you'll understand why in a second. Um, Cock de Leon tail. What else would you possibly use as a tailing material? I hear you ask. Some UTC ultra wire. And also, just to finish things off a little bit, um, some Glowbrite thread, which I'm gonna use to make a little bit of a collar. So let's get on with the tie. Um, first things first, blank jig hook in the vise. And I'm just gonna lay on a very small, very fine layer of tying thread. Um, using these tungsten jig backs, you can actually glue them onto the shank of the hook. But to be honest, I find that really fiddly and really messy. So I tend not to bother, which is why I do it this way. I'm just gonna take my thread to kind of just level with the point of the hook. And I'm gonna tie in my tailing material before I put the jig back on. Now you've got to be slightly careful with this because what you don't want to do is build up too much bulk of thread and materials at the eye end of the hook because if you do the jig back doesn't sit properly on the hook. So um, first things first, I've got three Coq de Leon fibres and I'm just going to catch them in with a couple of turns shift that down to make the tail the right length. And I don't want a very long tail on this. This is a little tiny nymph. So there you go, just kind of, maybe even a bit shorter than that actually, just kind of about the length of the hook again. And I'm gonna catch it down going towards the back of the hook with a few turns of thread underneath to splay those ends out. And again, just come back a little bit and trim off. Now I'm not gonna allow the fibers of that Coq de Leon feather to carry on going down the hook because I don't want that bulk. I'm going to trim it off right level with the point of my size 18 hook. The next thing is I'm going to put my jig back on. Now I'm using the smallest size of jig back in copper and I found that this is probably the most productive color for this little nymph. Although I have got them tied in silver, but copper seems to work really well. When I talk about tungsten jig backs, you can see that the entire thing is made out of tungsten and takes up almost the entire length of the hook. Really important with these that you don't use the wrong size for the hook. So take advice on which size jig backs are right for the hooks. These ones fit perfectly on the 18 jig champion. They're designed to do so. Um, and you can see they're a little kind of recesses in the body of this thing for you to allow you to get your thread in there. As I say, you can use a dab of super glue on the hook. I just don't like it. I find it gets a bit messy and I end up with my fingers stuck together, which is frankly disappointing. Anyway, a few turns of the tying thread just to secure it down. And the whole operation with the way that I tie this is designed to stop that jig back pushing off the central position on the hook. So I'm gonna lash it down using the nano silk, which is one of the greatest things about this thread, because it's so strong, you can really get a good grip on things. But the negative side of it is that it's also very slippery. So the body of this jig back, that entire part there, which is all tungsten with a copper coating, I'm not gonna be able to lay my nano silk down on that portion of the fly at all. It's just too slidey. So, the next part of the process, when I'm happy that I've got it fixed in place, is I'm just going to shorten my thread down a wee bit to about there. And then I'm going to take a loop 
And you can see as I do it, it kind of pops off. Catch it around the back of the jig back and just put in three or four locking turns. So essentially what I've got is a tight um, few turns of thread around the body of the jig back, an open loop on the back part, and then a tight um, couple of turns around the tail end. I'm just going to carry that on down. Now I don't want to flatten the tail too much, so I'm just going to take it maybe three, three millimetres. That's about all I need. You can probably just about see that the tail is now kind of laying down quite nicely in a nice little tangent with the back of the, the jig back. A few turns of thread. I'm now going to grab my copper wire. I'm using the UTC extra small, very fine for this size of fly. I do tie this in a 16 and actually in, in a 14 as well. Um, also, you can go down to a 20 in the other direction and these jig backs just about fit on a size 20. So copper wire introduced at the back. A couple of turns just to secure it in at the back there. Working at the back, you've got a little bit of room, no more than three or four mil, and that's all you need. But I'm not going to take this attempt to try to take this thread back up the back of the jig back. It just won't work, and you can probably just about see also. I've left the wire so it's underneath that middle section. So I'm going to go back in the other direction to what I came before. So I'm going to use a reasonably open loop, and I'm going to pinch with my finger and thumb to secure the thread to the body, and then, again, a few robust turns of thread around that first bit of the, the fly. There's actually a fairly loose bit of thread there, don't worry about that. I just need to make sure that that um, copper wire is secured in place. Now that's all I'm going to use the Semperfly Nano Silk for. I'm going to do a whip finish now. And I'm going to trim off. Now, grab my other bobbin which has got the Ato text stream on it, again in olive. And the mission now is to coat this entire copper with this text stream thread, which is also a bit of a faff, to be honest. But although it's quite a labor intensive process, it is well worth it. Same routine then. Again, don't attempt at this stage to cover this part of the, um, the jig back with your thread. It just won't stick. So again, an open loop. Shorten my thread down a wee bit to catch it in at the end at that tail portion and just a couple of whips. Now this is where you build up a tiny little cone at the back of the jig back. Don't be tempted to get it too close to the jig back because it will push that over the eye and you don't want that. But I'm just building up a little bed of this thread. It's, it's larger diameter than the, um, than the Semper fly, so you can actually build up a little kind of thread cone. And you can see that what's happening, as I start to whip up to the back of that jig back, the gap between the jig back and the thread is closing. Okay, just be patient here and start to get to the stage where you can get that thread right on the back of the jig back. And then suddenly, where each layer can rest against each other, you can suddenly start to fill that gap up. And then what you're going to do is just bring your thread all the way up and cover the entire thing with thread. I'm just going to now start taking my thread back down towards the tail, in, tail area. Okay, that's the trickiest bit done. Now, next part of the process is some dubbing and I've got some fantastic um, dubbing from Andrew Ellis, some scruffy dubbing, which is olive with a few other coloured fibres in it. Um, with the dubbing for this fly, it's pretty useful to understand what colour olives there are in the river that you're fishing. Some will be paler than others, some will be really dark. And to be honest, I tie according to the river I'm fishing. So turn over a rock or two, have a little rummage around in the weed beds, and you'll find what colour the olives are that you need to match. And then you try to find a piece of dubbing that matches that colour the best you can. So in my local river, because it's very clear, very crystal clear in fact, the thread I need, the uh, rather the dubbing I need, needs to be quite dark. So just slide that little line of dubbing up. Now, I'm not making a 
what's a, I suppose a tapered dubbing thread here. It's very level because you don't want to try to add any bolt to the fly. And literally all I'm going to do is dub this dubbing rope up the little nymph towards the head. And you can see it makes quite an even little rope. And I'm going to leave just a couple of mils of the tying thread exposed so I can bring up my rib. So once you've got all your dubbing in, grab hold of your copper wire, try not to trap your tail, and then just make some nice, even, reasonably tight turns. So it's biting into that dubbing, forming a little bit of segmentation as you bring up that copper wire. Again, if you're using a silver jig back, you would use silver wire in these circumstances. You can have a little bit of a play too. A couple of wraps of thread over the top just to secure everything in place. Grab an old pair of scissors and trim off. At this stage, just a tiny, tiny pinch, more of that dubbing, just to cover up that last little bit of the tying thread. Like so. And then I'm going to whip finish with this. I have actually got a great load of these tied up just in this kind of colour uh, profile with nothing else on them at all. So just literally an olive nymph, just like that. And one of my best mates, Billy Rankin, um, has had fantastic success with a fly tied exactly like this with almost no colour in it at all, just plain olive and a, um, a copper jig back underneath. But the one little area that I do add sometimes is a Glowbrite collar. So this is Glowbrite, what is it, number four I think it is, yeah, I think, is it four? Can't read that, it's worn off, it's red anyway. It doesn't really matter that much, I've used it in orange as well. And I'm just going to introduce a little collar at the top, a couple of turns of this um, Glowbrite thread to just give it a bit of attraction. So a couple of turns there, then I'm going to swap the tag end of the thread underneath and a couple of turns there as well. That just helps to keep it neat and tidy so you can get a cleaner cut so you don't get too straggly an end on the glow bright. And then a whip finish. Just try and keep it neat and tidy. To be honest, it doesn't matter if it's that tidy. The fish don't seem that bothered, but um, you know, Trying to make an effort as we're making a video about how to tie it. Again, just going to get my snips in and just clean off that end as tightly as I can to the body of the fly. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of UV resin just to ensure that when that bug gets attacked by trout with sharp teeth, that um, collar doesn't get completely destroyed. So just the merest of scrapes of UV resin and just gently with a dubbing needle go around the outside. I've got a stray fibre there which is annoying. I'll trim that off in a second. You'll notice of course that the um, the Glowbrite does absorb the resin and, and it makes it go a little bit darker. It's not a big issue really. It still pings like a really interesting coloration. One of the things about this is, this is designed, this little nymph, to imitate a natural food item. And my theory about this sort of stuff, which relates to dry fly as well, if you've got loads of natural food items in the river, why is a fish going to take your imitation? What is it about your imitation that means it picks your fly, a completely unnatural object, ahead of all the natural stuff that's in the river. Um, which is why I think you don't tie these things to make them look exactly the same uh, as the, uh, the natural food items. You know, there's got to be something about them that makes them stand out from the natural food in the river to make the trout and the grayling come and pick them up. And for me, that red collar, that just little bit of glow bright, does that job. So that's why I put the extra bit in. It can be red, it can be orange, or it can be a little bit of mylar tinsel or something like that just to try to make it bling a little bit. So that's why that goes in. Okay, last job with this fly. Just grab my um, dubbing teaser. 
give it a little bit of a brush. Just tease some of those fibres out. I don't want to go crazy here. It's a little tiny nymph. There's all sorts of fantastic colours in this scruffy dubbing. There's some blues, there's some reds. I think this one's called Highland Peat, actually. But the olive in it, I really like the olive. It's a really lovely dark olive colour. There we are. So there he is. That is my olive tungsten jig back. Now that can be fished as a single fly on the end of a reasonably short leader in really shallow water. And what you'll find is the trout and grayling will come darting out from actually inside the weed beds to eat this. Um, Billy, who I mentioned earlier on, has had some great success actually bouncing this little nymph actually off the top of the ranunculus weed um, in the chalk streams and fish come up through the weed and eat it. Um, they must just kind of see the flash of that little copper bead and just come and grab it, they love it. You can also fish it as part of a team and it's really deadly effective when fished in conjunction with that quilled nymph that I've already showed you how to tie in another video. In fact, there's a link to it at the end of this tying video. So, um, you know, if you want to fish this with two flies, one of these and one of those um, quilled nymphs is a devastating combination. There you go. Um, as I say, a little bit complicated for such a tiny fly, but well worth persevering with. Um, I hope you get on okay with it. Um, source the materials first, so it's really important that you get the right stuff, the, a nice strong hook and the, the smallest jig back that you can get to fit on it. Um, if you do get to tie it, I hope that goes okay. Good luck with the tie. Uh, when you go out to the river, tie it on and I hope it gets you a few fish. Thanks ever so much for watching as usual and I'll see you again very soon.